Portland, Oregon. Ever wonder what it'd look like to live in this sprawling city? Over 132 people move here every single day. This is what gets you where. I personally was so curious to see what's on the market in Portland, so today we're gonna take a look at three different houses at three different price ranges to see if this is something you wanna live in. Uh, welcome to our new subdivision in Milwaukee. House number one is on the lower price range. It's marketed at $550,000, three bedrooms, two and a half baths, and over 2,000 square feet. You'll love this house. All right, let's go take a look. All right. Thank you to the agent, Ron, for letting us film. Wow, this place is awesome. There's about uh, 2,600 square feet in this house. I decided to rate each house based on three criteria: Location, layout, and financial investment. At the end of the episode, we'll see which one wins. It's really laid out well. You really like it and you see the whole thing. Oh, I see it's got something. a really nice pantry here too. I see something I really like, which is something for personally for me is because I work everywhere, like on the internet, my laptop is my business. I don't want to take care of a yard. So I like that there's no yard over here. <laughs> It's kind of your choice. No, this is perfect. There's like a little grass patch, which seems yeah. more manageable than like a acre. Yeah. Milwaukee, this area of Milwaukee is a, is a really older area. Yep, that's right. We're not actually in Portland. We're exactly five minutes away from it. Milwaukee is a newer area that's built, and it's a lot cheaper to buy a house than it is in actual Portland. The other thing that's really cool about this house is you're only a mile or so from 205 to be on the freeway, or you can be over and go across the Selwood Bridge in very short period of time, or you can be at Highway 99 and go towards Oregon City or back into Portland in just a very, very few minutes. How far are we away from the airport right now? Time-wise, it doesn't take that long, okay. but miles-wise, I'm going to guess 10 miles. Okay, 10 miles. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I was making sure because um, a lot of the work I do travel a lot, so it's not too, too far. It's really a nice open floor plan. Yeah. And it's got high ceilings. Oh, One yeah. One thing about the high ceilings, it makes the house seem bigger and it makes it seem more spacious. All right, should we check out upstairs? Yeah, let's go. All right. After you. Okay guys, so as we check out the second floor, I want to quickly say that at the end of this video, you got to stay. Ron is actually giving advice to first-time home buyers. And even if you can't afford a house or you're not looking for a property right now, he gives some amazing advice for you to prepare for the future. So what I suggest you do, if you're not ready to, you know, buy something today, mm -hmm. is you should know the market. So make sure you guys check out the very end. Wait, this is a laundry room? Yeah, laundry oh, room that's upstairs. Insane. A lot of cabinet space. Yeah. Very cool. So here's the best part of the house. This is the master bedroom. Check a look at this closet. This will blow your socks off. Oh my gosh. Check this out. Oh, there it keeps going. <laughs> this is great. It is great. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. This has really good lighting. Wow. Okay. I mean, I, I like the fact that there's not too much yard, but it does directly view someone else's. But I mean, this master bathroom is really awesome. Let's check out the other rooms. It's really here's the yes sir the other bathroom here is where the other be, uh, bedrooms is. Okay, then we got two more bedrooms here. This one's got a walk-in closet also. Oh so wow! Okay. There's two cool. bedrooms that have full walk-in closets. Then the third bedroom just has a regular closet. I like how all the windows are like a good decent size. It's not like a small little crack. Yeah, I mean one of the criteria I was looking for is because I want to rent it out to other people and I would only like be living here periodically. This this does look like really good spaciousness. It looks very very great for like renters perspective there's a walk-in closet. Plus the media room, which you haven't seen yet. Wait, there's a media room? Oh yeah, they come this way. No way. Oh, wow. So I could see this as like maybe, since I do a lot of video work, I could see this as like an editing station or a filming room. I could see like tables here mm -hmm. and like all the computers. This is actually really great. I didn't know this was like part of the floor plan. And there's like an office downstairs too. Yeah. So this is like almost like five bedrooms. There's more surprises. This is awesome. Yeah, I think this is definitely the highlight of this house just because I know personally when I was looking at property, it's important to just have like a bedroom space, but also like a workspace. And I can see this like as an extension, so it separates it. Mm -hmm. There's 110 people a day moving to Portland. Every day? Every day, 110 people, which is putting a lot of pressure on our housing stock in Portland. 
Uh, Here's why it'd be place. a good investment. Yeah. Our office has a place listed, uh, it's two miles from here. And that it is a two bedroom house with a full basement and they want 725 for it. And you can move two miles to be out of Portland mm -hmm. and get all this for 549. Yeah. And or you go up into Happy Valley, prices are through the roof up there. The same house in Happy Valley would cost big dollars, 850, 900,000 for something of this quality. That's what I noticed. Like everything for this square footage would be oh, actually almost a million. Ron, how did you personally like get started real estate? How many, how long ago was that? <laughs> Back in the Stone Age, I started selling real estate in 1976. So the real estate market has changed dramatically since then. Then. We didn't have fax machines back then. What's a fax machine? Yeah, you know what a fax that? machine is. Yeah, there you go. So how has the Portland real estate evolved the past 30, 40, 40 years? years? Yeah. <laughs> it's evolved a lot. Average sales price back in 1976, I'm guessing, was about 30000 Now the average sales price is like 400 So it's it's really shot up. Okay. And in the meantime, we've had a lot of lot of uh, ups and downs in 1980. Interest rates went to 20%. You know, it was really hard to sell houses to 20% interest. Now you can get a loan for about three and a half percent. As a first time prospecting house buyer, what's important to consider? Well, first of all, can you afford it? Are you tapped out to your max? That's, some people aren't comfortable putting it, you know, making their payment. The bank will loan you a lot of money. It doesn't mean that that's what you want to spend. So you want to feel comfortable with the payment to start with. Number two is I think you've got to make sure you're in a location that, that you want to be in because, uh, uh, if you're stuck someplace where it's hard to get to work, it makes a big difference, especially with traffic these days. I've seen people saying down payment is recommended like 20%, 10%, 3%. You can get an FHA loan. Yes, most first time home buyers end up with something like that, 3% down. What's your the payment cost? goes up a lot, but uh, okay. but uh, the more money you put down, the lower your payment goes. And a rough rule of thumb is, you know, uh, a third of your monthly income should be your house payment. When is it too early to start prospecting, you'd say? Well, you've got to make sure, number one, you're pre-qualified. So you're looking at houses you can afford. There's nothing worse than taking a buyer out to house and the house is talking to them. They love it, but they can't afford it. Most people have what we call is a, uh, they have champagne taste and a beer budget, which means that everybody always likes the next level up what they can afford. Mm -hmm. So if you can afford a $300,000 house, you really like the 400. That's what you see yourself in. The 300,000 is just okay. Everybody always wants a little bit more than what they can afford. So what I suggest you do, if you're not ready to, you know, buy something today, mm -hmm. is you should know the market. If you're here, if you move to Portland from Los Angeles, you don't know Portland. There's a big difference between Happy Valley and Northwest Portland. There's a big difference between Selwood and Brentwood, Darlington. You need to know what uh, what the areas are and where you feel most comfortable. Okay, this is a cool house, isn't it? What'd you think about the property? Okay, so 51st Avenue, honestly, it blew my expectation. I saw it was three bedrooms, but I didn't expect the extras, the, this room office, there was a media room. It's a, an crazy amount of uh, value for the price tag. I'm from Los Angeles, so I know this is like rare. Crazy value. All the windows are super open. My only thing that I did see that is of concern, there was basically no yard, but there's like a little grass area. And yeah, going upstairs, the view was directly looking into a backyard. However, again, for me, I'm kind of in the zone for working. So like, I feel like this is fine. Since I don't have a perspective on Milwaukee, how is the neighborhood? Is there any coffee shops? Like, what's the life outside here? Well, it's really cool. Uh, down the street, about a oh, half mile, I guess, is a nice shopping center. There's a, a Safeway store there. The best Thai food in Portland is there, I think, in okay. Curry. They've got three or four different uh, restaurants there. It's, it, it, you can use a coffee shop. You can walk down and, and get your urban experience. Okay, that's, that's important. Coffee shops are important for me. <laughs> Thank you, Ron, for showing me this place. It was really cool. I'm glad you came. Awesome. <clears throat> So we're back from house number one and it was super fun. I don't really do these types of videos, so I hope you guys like this video. I wanna quickly give a recap of what we just saw. Let me just quickly tell you a story. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles and the reason why I'm telling you this is because when I was younger, we actually lost our home. My parents had to move around a lot just because of all the recession and economic crisis going on. And I remember like being really scared to be in a home because I would have, I was afraid to lose it. 
but I really wanted to kind of face my fear and start house shopping. I'm not looking to buy a house tomorrow, but in the next few years, I definitely want to start planning to get investment property or learn more about the market. So in this series, I'm gonna also show you guys million dollar properties. The next house is around $2 million and the next one after that is like 5 million. What gets you where is just all about, you know, for me, what gets you where and just to imagine what life would look like. Of course, money is not everything, but definitely allowing yourself to dream big and to see what your life could look like in those environments is something I really want to share. Thank you guys so much for watching Darwin Nation and let me know your thoughts. This is something new for me and I'm really scared what you guys think, but shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, just comment below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace, love you, goodbye.